Leaked drone footage shows Ukrainian forces using their drones to clear mines. It sounds crazy, but we are going to be breaking down some combat footage of just that. And more importantly, we're going to talk about when this technique can work and when it can't. Let's get right into it. Okay, a lot of people in the live streams ask about drones clearing mines, and while I think there's some promise in the technology, we're going to look at this leaked footage from, uh, I think it's the uh, 241st Territorial Defense Brigade of Ukraine, and see how they can use drones to clear mines. So, uh, I have it muted because obviously they're using some copyrighted music. Now, what they point out is that there are boxes in these three locations of mines, right? You can see where Russian forces have just kind of removed and stacked all of these boxes um, and gotten anti-tank mines, it appears, ready for deployment. And they, this is not, they are in a pile somewhere and you can see they drop this mortar shell. By the way, guys, I want to point out to the YouTube censors that no human beings appear in any of these videos. These are mines being destroyed with mortars. So don't demonetize me, please. Okay. So you see they drop one uh, mortar and it ignites one of the mines in these uh, boxes and they start to cook off and watch what happens as they cook off and then eventually the drone gets out of the airspace and they point out that again here's where it's cooking off and there's all of these boxes also full of anti-tank mines right so eventually the idea is that this fire will spread and detonate the nearby boxes um it, they don't appear to have footage of that but you can see here right these are more russian anti-tank mines uh let's uh, take a look right um I'll try to identify exactly what they are. These are probably, uh, these are probably like T-46s. Um, they could be something, they, they could be more, they could be newer. Uh, let's see. Let's see if there's Russian-made AT mines. Uh, yeah, here's, well, this is an anti-personnel mine. Um, but you have some of these types of mines. Again, we're going to see, there you go. There's what I'm talking about. Here are the exact mines that we're looking at, right? These look like they are the mines, but without the actual detonator installed. Um, it looks like maybe here's the mine, and then here is the detonator. Um, and obviously, these mines would be prepared for use um, by installing the detonator, and that would make them ready. Now, remember, anti-tank mines have a large, uh, heavy triggering mechanism. Um, they are meant to uh, be triggered by tanks. So it takes literal uh, hundreds of pounds, thousands of pounds to set them off, not hundreds, thousands. So an individual, you and I, uh, I don't recommend this, but you, you could probably hop up and down on it and it still wouldn't set it off. Again, these mines, they are for taking out heavy armored vehicles. So it's actually a waste to have them cleared by anything else. So you could see that time the mortar explosion hit one of these mines dead off. The mortar functioned as the detonator, setting off a chain reaction and causing all the mines to detonate. Now, here's the thing. The reason this works is because these mines are piled up. They haven't been deployed yet. If these mines were several feet away from each other, you would have a different story. It would be much more difficult to clear them by setting off one and hoping that there's a chain reaction. Um, if these mines were deployed, you, this would be unlikely to be an effective tactic at clearing them out. It's also very easy to see them because they are not just exposed, but look, you and I can see them from a distance. They're large. They're sitting right here in a pile. They've clearly been emptied out of these containers and crates. It's obvious from overhead. But if you were to bury these mines even a little bit in this dirt, it would be a totally different story, right? I also want to point out that this appears to be like maybe a Russian trench line. It looks like the Russian forces were in this entrenched area. They appeared to maybe have, um, my guess is, started to deploy these mines out. This may have been a simple like defensive trench, like to protect themselves from artillery fire. It wasn't meant to be a fighting position, but this could be a second line of defense because look, the Russian forces have cleared this entire area, which you would want to do if you wanted a really effective fighting position in your trenches because there's no cover and there's no concealment. That meant that if, if the enemy, in this case, Ukrainian forces, were to attempt to clear the trench, they'd have to pass through a sort of mini no man's land in which they could be targeted with uh, 
machine gun fire and other weapon systems by Russian troops in these trenches. And these mines may have been deployed because they may be part of, they may have been intended to um, mine this area here. Right? So they identify, again, a large pile of anti-tank mines that don't look like they've been de deployed. The uh, Russian, the, the Ukrainian drone drops a mortar. You can see that mortar strike failed. Look how close you have to be to detonate these mines. And this is a huge pile of mines. Right, the second one hits directly, sets off all of the mines, and you can see the strength of the explosion. But look as they pan out. This is also important. As they pan out, you see that if this were a road, it that tremendous effort would only have really cleared effectively maybe a few dozen square feet of this road. It's a really slow method, and it depends again on having piles of AT mines in the same place so while this is pretty cool this is a a really interesting um example of targeting russian logistics i would not say that it is a uh uh sustainable method for clearing large roads and fields of mines guys if you've been on the live stream you know that i recently launched my product strike gum this is pre-workout gum um i worked with a manufacturer in denver to create a single piece of gum with an entire scoop of pre-workout uh, in the center, right? It's a concentrate. Um, if you're looking for a way to crush your fatigue and fuel your workouts, um, this is the way to do it, right? It was inspired by my time in Afghanistan when I would need a caffeine source when I was on these long patrols, but all we had were these gross energy drinks called Rippets. They tasted disgusting. They left you feeling bloated. Uh, you know, you were full of just sugary grossness. Um, and so I figured out a way to create, uh, get the equivalent of like five, five energy drinks in your pocket with one pack of strike gum. Um, so it's available at strikegum.com. Uh, you can check it out. The link's up there. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.